Good afternoon. My name is Fiona Walport and I'm a PhD student at Imperial College London under the supervision of Leroy Gardner and David Nedicott. I will be presenting some of my work on the stability and design of stainless steel structures. I will begin by giving a um, brief overview of stainless steel and um, the context of this work, followed by an assessment of the current design standards and the development of a new method of structural stainless steel design by advanced analysis. Stainless steel is the general name, the family of corrosion-resisting steel alloys. There are five main groups of stainless steel, with austenitic, duplex and phthitic stainless steels being the most commonly used in structural applications. Stainless steel was invented in 1912, and it is currently widely used across a range of industries due to its excellent corrosion resistance, toughness and strength. This slide shows two of the earliest structural applications of stainless steel with the cladding of the Chrysler Building in New York in 1929 and the Gateway Arch in St. Louis in 1965. Research into stainless steel has increased significantly over the last couple of decades, and with a growing awareness of whole life costs and the need for structural sustainability, there have been a growing number of applications of stainless steel. This slide now shows some more recent applications of stainless steel in structural applications, um, where the choice of material has been governed by factors such as aggressive environments rather than just purely the aesthetics. For example, the top left figure shows a subway station in New York where increasing flood damage has resulted in a design solution being formed with stainless steel. Currently, although a number of design standards exist for stainless steel, their provisions have generally been um, de developed following and in conjunction with the carbon steel design codes. Stainless steel and carbon steel have distinctly different material properties. Whilst carbon steel is accurately characterized by a linear elastic, perfectly plastic material model, stainless steel exhibits a highly non-linear material stress strain response with no clear yield point and significant strain hardening. Stainless steel is between 2.5 and 6 times the cost of stain, um, carbon steel. However, if we take into account the whole life cost, then stainless steel becomes a more competitive option. Therefore, it is fundamental that we um, design effectively and that the design codes take into account um, the differences in material properties so that we may design um, safe, sustainable and structurally sound design. So I will now discuss the current design standards. As previously mentioned, the stainless steel design codes have been developed following and in conjunction with the carbon steel design codes. EC3 part one for carbon steel states that an elastic global analysis may be used in all cases and that an elastic global analysis should be based on the assumption that the stress strain behavior of the material is linear whatever the stress level is. The supplementary rules for stainless steel in part four gives no further guidance on global analysis. However, as we can see, stainless steel exhibits a highly non-linear response and therefore it is important to assess whether these rules still apply for stainless steel application. This figure shows load displacement paths from a number of different analyses and highlights the significance of both material nonlinearity with these paths and geometric nonlinearity with these paths, which is also known as second order effects. Second order effects must be included in analysis when they significantly modify the structural behavior. This assessment is made based on the critical load factor, which is the fact by which the applied loading would need to be increased to cause elastic instability of the frame in a global sway mode. The Eurocode gives limits when second order effects may be deemed sufficiently small and a first order analysis carried out. And these are when the critical load factor is greater than or equal to 10 for an elastic analysis and greater than or equal to 15 for a plastic analysis. Again, these limits have been developed on the assumption of a linear elastic or a linear elastic perfectly plastic material model and therefore should be assessed for application to structural design, structural stainless steel design. To assess these limits, this figure shows results from elastic FE analyses comparing the relationship between bending moments from first and second order elastic FE analyses. Frames with high values of alpha critical are not susceptible to second order effects, and the bending moments from first and second order analyses are almost equal. As alpha critical reduces, second order effects become increasingly significant, with around a 10% difference alpha critical equal to 10, tending to infinity as alpha critical approaches unity. To assess the impact of material nonlinearity, this figure now shows the results from plastic FE analyses. It can be seen that the results no longer fit well with the amplification factor included in the Eurocodes. If material nonlinearity is considered, greater deflections ensue due to the loss of material stiffness. Therefore, by ignoring material nonlinearity, maximum second order forces and moments in the considered frames are underestimated. 
Therefore, we can conclude that plastic analysis should always be considered for stainless steel design. Um, to allow for comparative assessment of second order effects in plastic analysis to those in elastic analysis, we need to calculate a critical load factor that takes into account this material nonlinearity. If we plot the plastic FE results now against a modified critical load factor, we can see that the results now align well with the modified amplification factor. This modified critical load factor takes into account the reduced stiffness of the frame and therefore represents the behaviour of frame after a certain degree of plastification. Traditional design methods and the current design codes are based on discretizing cross-sections into classes. Class 1 cross-sections in bending are able to reach their plastic moment capacity and have sufficient rotation capacity to be used in plastic design. Class 2 cross-sections are able to reach their plastic moment capacity but have limited rotation capacity and are therefore not able to be used in plastic design. Class 3 cross-sections are only able to attain their elastic moment capacity and Class 4 cross-sections an effective moment capacity. When we apply this classification to stainless steel, we get two main limitations. Firstly, we have just concluded that plastic analysis is imperative for stainless steel design. And therefore, with the current codes, we are restricted to both class one cross sections and the plastic moment capacity, which is defined as the yield stress times the plastic modulus. Secondly, we know that stainless steel exhibits significant strain hardening past the yield stress. And therefore, if we're restricted to the design capacity um, of the plastic moment capacity, we result in highly inefficient design solutions. For stainless steel to be a sustainable and competitive option, it is paramount that the design codes um, accurately capture the differences in material. The material nonlinearity adds complexities for traditional design methods, and therefore the opportunities offered by more advanced analysis should be exploited. I will now present a new method for um, structural stainless steel design by advanced analysis. Advanced structural analysis is commonly carried out using finite element models constructed using beam elements. Beam elements, however, are incapable of capturing the effects of local buckling, and disregarding the effects of local buckling can lead to overestimations of system strengths leading to unsafe design. This is illustrated with the following example of a beam under three-point bending. The beam FE model, which does not consider local buckling, keeps deforming under increasing load. If we now consider the shell FE model, we can see that this, which does capture local buckling, this fails at a peak moment capacity. Shell elements are accurate in capturing all cross-sectional behavior. However, they are computationally expensive. They will now be used as benchmark results with which to compare the accuracy of both the proposed approach and the current Eurocode predictions. The shell element models include geometric imperfections as well as material nonlinearity through the Rambo Gosgood material model and residual stresses. It is important to first validate our shell um, models so that we know that they, against test data, so we know that they actually capture all local and global behavior. And with these validated shell models, we can then generate benchmark results. So this figure will be used to show the uh, bending capacity of beams under three point bending. The solid black line shows the current Eurocode design predictions. Class one and two cross sections are able to reach their plastic moment capacity. Class three cross sections, the elastic moment capacity. And class four cross sections, the effective moment capacity. If we now plot the Shell FE benchmark results on the figure, we can see how overly conservative the current design standards are. This is in part due to simplifications in the design standards, such as the discrete jump um, bending capacity between class two and class three cross sections. However, most significantly due to the inaccuracies in accurately characterizing stainless steel. As previously mentioned, shell elements are um, computationally expensive and therefore a design solution was sought that utilizes beam elements while safely capturing all cross-sectional behavior and therefore um, resulting in safe solutions. To do this, the continuous strength method has been utilized. The continuous strength method is a deformation-based method that replaces the concept of cross-section classification with a continuous relationship between cross-section slenderness and deformation capacity. The CSM has two key components. Firstly, a continuous base curve determines the maximum strain that a cross-section can withstand under applied loading. Secondly, an elastic linear hardening material model allowing for strain hardening and enabling stresses higher than the yield stress to be achieved. In this study, it is the first component that has been utilized to simulate local buckling 
um, and limit the strains, thereby controlling the extent to which plasticity, moment redistribution and strain hardening can be exploited. If we consider the shell FE model, we can see that local buckling requires a finite length over which to develop. We can capture the beneficial effects of moment gradients by averaging our strains in the beam element model over this characteristic length L buckle before applying the CSM strain limit. Going back to our earlier example of a beam under three point bending. This is a um, class one cross section and therefore the Euro code prediction um, would strip the design capacity to the plastic moment. If we now apply the CSM strain limit to our beam FE model, we can see that this results in a capacity prediction close to but on the safe side of the shell peak. However, with a 30% increase in capacity from the current Eurocode design. Plastic analysis is cur currently limited to class one cross sections. Um, and we can see from this example um, of a class three cross section, which the Eurocodes would currently li limit to the elastic moment capacity, can in fact still achieve a 25% increase in capacity prediction whilst remaining safe sided. Therefore, this proposal can be applied to any cross section. This is emphasized by looking at the full range of cross section slendernesses and classes. A good fit is achieved with the shell benchmark results and comparing with the Eurocos, we can see the significant and consistent benefits. The example of beams under three point bending has been presented. However, this approach can be um, applied from member level to design to system level design. It avoids the need for time consuming semi empirical question equations as well as other design complications such as effective lengths. It directly incorporates strain hardening and material nonlinearity and is able to capture the beneficial effects of moment gradients and redistribution in more complex cases. The need for plastic analysis and stainless steel design um, means that the application of this method to all cross section is a clear benefit. Advanced analysis is particularly appropriate for stainless steel due to the high material value and the complexities presented by the nonlinear material stress strain response. So to conclude, the nonlinear material stress strain behavior has a direct influence on the structural behavior of stainless steel, and it is fundamental that the design codes reflect this. An appropriate allowance for the premature loss of stiffness is required, and the alpha crit um, mod method is a consistent and accurate approach for the assessment of second order effects. Advanced analysis allows for the efficient design, um, considering plasticity, moment redistribution, and strain hardening, as well as being allowed to um, be applied to all cross sections. With a growing need for resilient structures that are durable and resistant to extreme events, the use of stainless steel with its excellent blended properties could help meet these future demands. Ultimately, this work will allow for more efficient, safe, and sustainable stainless steel construction. Thank you very much for listening.